Brexit was already nasty, now it's turning personal. Michel Barnier, the EU's chief Brexit negotiator, and his UK counterpart, David Frost, took their frustrations to Twitter over the weekend for a very public argument. Let's cross over to our social media news desk, The Cube, where Shauna can tell us more. Well, this was Twitter diplomacy on full display. We saw Michel Barnier publicly sparring with his UK counterpart. All of this with regards to a key part of the rewriting of the withdrawal agreement, food imports. The suggestion first floated by the UK Prime Minister that the EU was trying to impose some sort of blockade between Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom along the Irish Sea for food imports. Now, Michel Barnier took to Twitter first, denying this, saying sticking to the facts is essential, a case in point, the EU is not refusing to list the UK as a third country for food imports. But David Frost then uh, detailed his response in a seven-part thread on Twitter. And what he said here was that uh, he was directly told in those negotiations this. I'm going to show you what exactly he said here, that I'm afraid that it's also been said to us explicitly in these talks that if we are not listed, we will not be able to move food to Northern Ireland. This is all very tricky. All of this happening on social media. So let's just delve a little bit more deep into this. I'm going to be joined by Shona Murray, my colleague in Brussels. Well, Shona, thanks very much for joining us here. So this is all happening on social media, but it's all very much more complicated than all these characters can uh, tell us here. So what we're seeing is one side trying to fact check the other. Uh, but what does this mean for a potential trade deal between the two now? Well, Shauna, I mean, I think what we can say is trust and relations between the two sides have all but completely diminished at this stage, given that bombshell last week about the internal markets bill. And here we see, as you said, Michel Barnier and David Trust Frost fact-checking each other around the trade negotiations, which are about to restart this week again. Now, Michel Barnier's tweet comes after a weekend of press reports in the UK, including a report written by Boris Johnson, that the EU is threatening to essentially blockade goods coming from Great Britain to Northern Ireland um, as part of the trade relations and as part of the, the Irish protocol. Now, the EU and Michel Barnier say this is completely untrue. It's spin, it's egregious, it's a bogus argument. The whole point of the withdrawal agreement or the Irish protocol in the withdrawal agreement is that there will be checks going from Great Britain to Northern Ireland to prevent a border on the island of Ireland. That's really the most important part of the Northern Ireland protocol. So it really shows that things are quite difficult between the two sides. Uh, Michel Barnier, as you said, they're in his tweet saying nothing in the protocol threatens the internal market of the UK. But of course, checks would apply. That's a prerequisite for signing off on this deal. And as you mentioned, and, you know, trade relations starting up again, it doesn't look great for there any progress to be made, knowing that these negotiations have been going on for six months now and they haven't made any progress. And now with things as fraught as they are, you can't see how they can move forward. And so another element of those tensions is with regards to the human rights laws. So where do both parties stand in this as well? Well, this is crucial. Now, it's not a surprise because uh, the UK has for some years now uh, thought about removing the UK from the European Convention on Human Rights. And that's what's been reported at the weekend. Even Theresa May, when she's Home Secretary at the time, had mooted this issue. But again, this will have massive ramifications for the Good Friday Agreement because the Good Friday Agreement, littered throughout the document itself, talks about adherence to the European Convention of New on Human Rights. Crucially, if you're a, a person, a citizen from Northern Ireland, you're entitled to be Irish, British and an EU citizen. That's really what the Good Friday is all about, about self-determination. So if the UK walks away from the European Convention, then Northern Ireland citizens who are EU citizens won't have access to the European Convention. So it's quite a massive deal. And again, it adds another layer of headache and confusion and difficulty around these Brexit negotiations. And the other question is, Shauna, is that people say, well, what direction is the UK going? if it's removing from one of the most important international conventions on human rights, one which an MP wrote, an I British MP wrote, um, when at the same time other countries like Russia and Turkey and other many other countries that have low human rights records, they're even part of the convention. So a uh, lot to play on this, and it hasn't been confirmed either, Shona, we should say, by the British government that they're going to do it. In fact, when questioned on this issue over the past few months, people like Dominic Raab and Boris Johnson have said that they, they would stay in it, but really that is uh, up for question. Now. Shauna. Thanks very much for breaking all of that down for us, Shona Murray, in Brussels. So plenty, th plenty happening on the social media sphere, but plenty more going to be happening too behind closed doors. Shona, thanks very much for that.